Genesis chapter 22. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went, both of them together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord Will Provide. As it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven, and said, By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this, and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven, and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose, and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham lived at Beersheba. Some time later, Abraham was told, Milcah is also a mother. She has borne sons to your brother Nahor. Uz the firstborn, Booz his brother, Kemuel the father of Aram, Kased, Hazo, Pildash, Jidlaf, and Bethuel. Bethuel became the father of Rebekah. Milcah bore these eight sons to Abraham's brother Nahor. His concubine, whose name was Rumah, also had sons, Teba, Gaham, Tahash, and Makah. Chapter 23 Sarah lived to be a hundred and twenty-seven years old. She died at Kiriath Arba, that is, Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham went to mourn for Sarah and to weep over her. Then Abraham rose from beside his dead wife and spoke to the Hittites. He said, I am a foreigner and stranger among you. Sell me some property for a burial site here so I can bury my dead. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Sir, listen to us. You are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of tombs. None of us will refuse you his tomb for burying your dead. Then Abraham rose and bowed down before the people of the land, the Hittites. He said to them, If you are willing to let me bury my dead, then listen to me and intercede with Ephron, son of Zohar, on my behalf. So he will sell me the cave of Machpelah, 
which belongs to him and is at the end of his field. Ask him to sell it to me for the full price as a burial site among you. Ephron the Hittite was sitting among his people, and he replied to Abraham in the hearing of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of his city. No, my lord, he said, listen to me. I give you the field, and I give you the cave that is in it. I give it to you in the presence of my people. Bury your dead. Again Abraham bowed down before the people of the land, and he said to Ephron in their hearing, Listen to me, if you will. I will pay the full price of the field. Accept it from me, so I can bury my dead there. Ephron answered Abraham, Listen to me, my lord. The land is worth four hundred shekels of silver, but what is that between you and me? Bury your dead. Abraham agreed to Ephron's terms and weighed out for him the price he had named in the hearing of the Hittites, four hundred shekels of silver, according to the weight current among the merchants. So Ephron's field in Machpelah, near Mamre, both the field and the cave in it, and all the trees within the borders of the field, was deeded to Abraham as his property in the presence of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of the city. Afterward, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave in the field of Machpelah, near Mamre, which is at Hebron, in the land of Canaan. So the field and the cave in it were deeded to Abraham by the Hittites as a burial site. Chapter 24 Now Abraham was old, advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in every way. Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his household, who was in charge of all that he owned, Please place your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I live. But you will go to my country and to my relatives and take a wife for my son Isaac. The servant said to him, Suppose the woman is not willing to follow me to this land. Should I take your son back to the land from where you came? Then Abraham said to him, Beware that you do not take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my birth, and who spoke to me and who swore to me, saying, To your descendants I will give this land. He will send his angel ahead of you, and you will take a wife for my son from there. But if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be free of this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant placed his hand under the right thigh of his master Abraham and swore to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten camels from the camels of his master and went out with a variety of good things of his master's in his hand. So he set out and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nahor. He made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of water when it was evening, the time when women go out to draw water. And he said, Lord, God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, I am standing by the spring, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now may it be that the young woman to whom I say, Please let down your jar, so that I may drink, and who answers, Drink, and I will water your camels also. May she be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac, and by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. And it came about, before he had finished speaking, that behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor, came out with her jar on her shoulder. The young woman was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had had relations with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me drink a little water from your jar. And she said, Drink, my lord. Then she quickly lowered her jar to her hand and gave him a drink. Now when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will also draw water for your camels 
until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran back to the well to draw, and she drew for all his camels. Meanwhile, the man was taking a close look at her in silence to find out whether the Lord had made his journey successful or not. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold ring weighing half a shekel and two bracelets for her wrists weighing ten shekels in gold. And he said, Whose daughter are you? Please tell me, is there room for us to stay overnight at your father's house? She said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, Milcah's son, whom she bore to Nahor. Again she said to him, We have plenty of both straw and feed, and room to stay overnight. Then the man bowed low and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and his trustworthiness toward my master. As for me, the Lord has guided me in the way to the house of my master's brothers. Then the young woman ran and told her mother's household about these things. Now Rebekah had a brother whose name was Laban, and Laban ran outside to the man at the spring. When he saw the ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrists, and when he heard the words of his sister Rebekah, saying, This is what the man said to me, he went to the man, and behold, he was standing by the camels at the spring. And he said, Come in, blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside, since I have prepared the house and a place for the camels? So the man entered the house. Then Laban unloaded the camels, and he gave straw and feed to the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the feet of the men who were with him. But when food was set before him to eat, he said, I will not eat until I have stayed in my business. And he said, Speak on. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, so that he has become rich, and he has given him flocks and herds, and silver and gold, and servants and slave women, and camels and donkeys. Now my master's wife Sarah bore a son to my master in her old age, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live. But you shall go to my father's house, and to my relatives, and take a wife for my son. Then I said to my master, Suppose the woman does not follow me. And he said to me, The Lord, before whom I have walked, will send his angel with you to make your journey successful. And you will take a wife for my son, for my relatives, and from my father's house. Then you will be free from my oath. When you come to my relatives, and if they do not give her to you, you will be free from your oath.